Hey, Pastor Dan here from Dexter Gospel Church once again with our eighth installment of Proverbs Practicals. I appreciate you watching these and I hope they're a blessing to you. The last couple verses we saw in Proverbs generally pertain to people with authority and power, shaping how we interact with and evaluate such people. This time we get an observation that can shape friendships and relationships. Proverbs 17.9 is the one we're looking at today. Proverbs 17.9. It says, He that covereth a transgression seeketh love, but he that repeateth a matter separateth very friends. Rather than a comparison like some of the other verses have given us, this one gives us a contrast. There's one kind of person who is good for friendships, for relationships, drawing themselves closer to other people. There is another who fractures relationships, even relationships they aren't personally in. The first person is the one who covers transgressions. It says, he that covers a transgression seeks love. The word for covering here, it is used of everything from concealment to literally covering something up with another substance to forgiveness. The person who helps someone else deal quietly with a transgression, something that other person did wrong, rather than blazing it abroad, seeks love. More on that in a moment. Now, while the word for covering can probably include the idea of a cover-up of concealment, and while that may be appreciated by the person that the cover-up is done for, I don't think this verse is saying that that is a moral course of action. Simply that it might be appreciated, it might be loved. On the other hand, to deal with a matter quietly, to handle transgressions directly rather than turning to gossip or backstabbing, to act in forgiveness. Those are all other implications of this word for covering. And those are all absolutely moral and absolutely right. See, there's a lot of times when we could get someone else in trouble. They have done something the boss wouldn't like, or their girlfriend wouldn't like, or that mom and dad wouldn't like, or some other friend they have wouldn't like. Now, this is not saying that we should lie and deceive to protect them. There's just too much in the scriptures about how we should be characterized by truthfulness. But sometimes we don't have to say anything. And if there's a way to help them, say, to come to repentance for any actual wrongdoing without blazoning it abroad to everyone around us, well, that's ideal. That would help build our relationship with them instead of damaging it. It might help build their relationship with that other person who wouldn't have approved instead of damaging it. Now, this does not negate processes like Matthew 18, in which a Christian brother or sister is doing something wrong, and despite being confronted about it humbly and directly, they won't stop doing it. They won't turn from that wrong action. Well, in those cases, sometimes we have an obligation to take the matter to someone else to help, following the course that the scriptures give us, of course. But in many cases, that was simply a mistake. Somebody just made a one-time error that isn't being repeated, and we don't have to tell everybody about it. And when we show that discretion, that patience, that willingness to help a person with a problem instead of just telling other people there was a problem, it says that we seek love. In fact, the term there could literally be translated procures love. It's relationship building to help people deal with their problems privately and quietly if possible. Now there is a system of discernment that has to be exercised here. We all know this with our kids, right? It's the difference between our children being tattletales who report everything their siblings do that they think might get the sibling in trouble, or the child letting us know that their sibling is walking out into traffic, or threatening another sibling with a knife. That same discretion doesn't get retired when we turn 16 or 18 or 21. We still need it as adults as we evaluate what others are doing and what our response to them should be. There's a difference between a morally wrong behavior, something that they won't stop doing, something that is dangerous to the person who's doing it or harmful to someone else. If so, and the person won't respond to direct attempts at correction, then it may need to be reported in the right way to the right person. But if not, if we're just trying to inflate our own importance or make ourselves look good by making them look bad or gain some advantage over them or someone else by reporting the problem to other people, that's probably not something that needs to be said and it would be better for our and their relationships if we didn't say it. 
The contrast, then, in the second part of the verse is to someone who goes around repeating matters. They heard about this person's mistake, somebody told them, and they just have to tell somebody else. This isn't necessarily first-hand reporting to an authority who is responsible for dealing with the problem so much as it is tail-bearing, gossip. It can also be repeating something that's already been resolved. That is, the person made a mistake. They were addressed about that mistake. They corrected that mistake. They've done everything they can to make the matter right. And yet, this person still goes and tells other people about it. Did you know about, did you hear about that one time when it's not necessary? And it ends up damaging, even destroying friendships. When it says very friends, it means really good friends. People that are truly close to each other can be separated by this behavior. It's destructive. It destroys our own relationships with the people that we're repeating things about. It destroys their relationships with other people. It's the opposite of the nature of God, who makes atonement for our transgressions, who forgives when we seek it, who makes peace where there was conflict and animosity. This takes a relationship that had peace and introduces conflict. God is the opposite of that. He comes into situations where there was conflict And he brings peace. My mom had an old saying, and perhaps it applies here. If it isn't true, if it isn't kind, and if it isn't necessary, don't say it. Now, there are times when we must speak hard truths out of kindness to someone involved. But there are many cases where true kindness would be to hold our tongue, to seek love, to build up friendships and relationships instead of destroying them. Just because someone does something someone else wouldn't approve of doesn't mean we have to report it. And even if it would benefit us to tell about it, it doesn't necessarily mean we should. Our goal should be the good of everyone involved, and that should be our guide. As always, if you've got questions or comments, don't hesitate to drop them in the comments section below. If these videos are helpful to you, hit like and subscribe to our channel for more. Until next time, I hope you stay well and walk in the joy of the Lord.